I first met Keith Kilby in 1998. I'd got in touch with him, luckily really, thanks to Eric Newby, who it turned out was in the same prison camp as, as Dad. And he suggested I contacted uh, Keith if I wanted to find out more about the camp and other people who'd been involved. So I rang Keith and uh, sure enough, he was extremely welcoming, interested in my father's story, as he was in anybody's story to do with uh, escapes from Italian prison camps. One night we heard a lot of cheering coming from the village of Sibiliano and Armistizio, Armistizio. And then we heard that the Germans were coming. So we, we SS made a hole in the wall, which you can still see, and we went out. We uh, marched out in threes from the camp. A big gap having been cut in the wire by the Italian guard. Ian English was there, Anthony Lang, Peter Langrish. And we, we had the most amazing lunch, just chatting about the camp and them telling me about their memories. One of the two of them remembered my father and it was just a, an utterly wonderful experience. And a couple of days later, I suppose, when he phoned me up and said, I hope you enjoyed the lunch and, you know, would you like to be become interested in the trust? And so what else could I say? But yes, of course, Keith, I'd love to. My grandparents were both very keen supporters of the Trust, and this stemmed from the lasting debt of gratitude they felt towards the Italian people. My grandfather was a prisoner of war in Salmona in the Second World War, and having escaped the camp, he was sheltered, fed and clothed by the Italian people at great risk to themselves. And their sense of generosity and warmth towards him, and subsequently, I think is something that's never been lost. And he and my grandmother were very keen supporters of the Trust, as I say, and they just felt that they wanted to make sure that Anglo-Italian relations were preserved for generations to come. A pair of sharp eyes had seen us from the window of a house, a farm. And she'd said to her husband, the lady who saw us, there are two men on our land, think they're in trouble, go and bring them in. She said, who are you? Who are you? And I spoke in Italian, obviously. I looked at her and I thought, I can't tell this lady a lie. So I said, Signora, we are the enemy. We are two English soldiers. We've escaped from a prison camp. expecting her to call her husband and face the Carabinieri and with her. To my utter amazement, she said, hmm, um, okay, all right. We shall be eating shortly. Ne fa niente, ne fa niente. Fra poco mangiamo. I couldn't believe it. And we ended up on the side of the hill and the next day, while we were eating some Red Cross food, we saw a little hunchback woman wade through the, the Tenacula, the little river, climb the hill with a pentelon on her head, carrying pasta for us. We uh, decided to go into the hills. Um, initially, the, the, when we were near the Fontanato, a lot of the Italian people came and with clothing and said, you know, you want to change. And a lot of, the, a lot of uh, colleagues did. They, they made themselves look like Italian. Well, the, the Allies aren't coming up to us. We better go down towards them. And so we went on, um, always being fed. We'd often sort of have some breakfast and before we could move on, a young boy would come and say, uh, they killed a chicken, we must stay for lunch, and that sort of thing. Gli italiani eh, hanno rischiato molto, perché se venivano spiati dai fascisti o, o dai tedeschi, venivano fucilati sulle pareti di casa 
oppure brucia da casa, eh, rischiato molto, perché portavano da mangiare ai, ai fuggiaschi. Io ho un'altra signora che non aveva figli, già aveva all'osteria, che scappava via e tutti senza mangiare, ma che gli dà cibo, che gli dà cibo, e che ne so io, signora. Allora diciamo, la farina si mettiamo a fare la pannella, lo cico, insomma la farina è acqua, diciamo, e facevamo un gallo di sta roba e ci mettevamo di formaggio e che c'ha volato, l'altro non c'eravamo. C'eravamo abituati, capito? Non è che questi tu li potevi mandare via così, perché quelli erano scappati via senza soldi. Senza, senza niente. Mi ricordo che uno ne mangiò 13 piatti, di un seguito non muore, non lo so come fa a cambiare. Parlava con le sorelle mie, io ero imparato a salutare, a salutare il patron, lui sotto il patron tutta la mattina arrivo, eh. Gli imparò a salutarlo in italiano e gli diceva ti, ti prendo un colpo, sembra il cutimone, capito? Allora Enrico la mattina eh, era contento, sono stato un padrone in italiano che sapeva che era imparato una parola italiana, no? E quando si alzò si presentò davanti, e se ti prendo un cuore, non si può fare. Ho been back several times to La Mia Valle, as I call it, and I thought, well, I might be able to do something. Well, I'd had odd people like Giuseppe here learning English and uh, so I set up the trust so that we could give the bursaries but at the same time as I set it up Fontenato people decided to have a luncheon and so we had this lun luncheon and um, at the same time the uh, uh, Montezuma Trust sort of flourished. Yes, I did go to London, did go to the Central School, and I was hosted by a family in um, West Finchley, North London. And it was a lovely time, it was my first time abroad on my own um, big city. Well, uh, this winter my mother looked for a new experience for me to let me go alone in a different country and she found out this bursary for mm -hmm. the students of my village yeah. because uh, Fontanellato hid some, um, some prisoners yes. during uh, some English prisoners during the war so oh, right. there is this bursary now from uh, the students. I had to write a personal statement and um, I had to fill a form and I wrote a personal motivation letter on why I wanted to come to London to study English and I wasn't involved 100% on the kind of stories and none of my relatives were saved by or saved or sheltered anybody during the Second World War but my family went through um, a war in the 90s and we moved to Italy because of it so I felt very close to the topic. I found a great group of students here that became very close friends and also I, find, I found a great group of, uh, of teachers who really helped me, so I was never alone. After four weeks I thought my English really improved and, and that was down to me making an effort of actually not speaking any Italians with Italian students around. Um, and um, I was going for a lot of walks with my host family um, and trying to engage in the house and I was watching a lot of TV as well in the evening. So it really, really helped, especially watching The Simpsons. Of course, a, a, a huge thank you for the possibility they gave me. It was amazing and I never forget it. I was very fortunate enough to be asked to become a trustee. And I think for me, it's so important that this message is shared and the younger generations can take on the baton and try and keep the memories of our grandparents, our parents, etc., alive, great grandparents, and really try and foster those relations and make sure that people never forget. 
and it's acknowledged just how much the Italian people did for our forefathers. And so for that reason, I'm uh, so proud to be a trustee and uh, it's, I'm so passionate about what, what a wonderful cause it is. I think the trust is, is great, what they're trying to do and what they are doing. And I think there is really a, a need for it, um, a need to tell the story and because it's so relevant even now to relate to these stories which are very human and we must not forget that we are talking about humans. They never refused me, never, because we were Christiani, human beings, to them. Yeah, it was amazing. Mm. Anyone who has met Keith would know <clears throat> that he was an incredibly generous man. He never treated himself uh, in any way to much of life's pleasures, but he gave huge pleasure and satisfaction to many others. And I think that is the part of Keith that we all honour today and we all remember. Thank you. And that was the start of a well, 20 year association with the Monte San Martino Trust and a 20 year friendship with Keith. Uh, we worked a lot together. Of course, I eventually went on to become chairman of the trust and really right up until the last days of his life, Keith remained fully involved and engaged in it and totally enthusiastic about it. He was a wonderful chap, a wonderful uh, trustee marvellous founder of the organisation and a wonderful friend to have. Consequently to being taken a prisoner in Sardinia, my life has been dominated by Italy and Italians. <laughs>